Christ and uh, welcome to this uh, program, the In Christ Re Realities. We are coming your way from uh, CMTV. We want to thank you for being there. We apologize for the past weeks that we are unable to come on air because of life issues. We are very, very excited to be with you today. And we believe that today we are going to learn something that will be very precious to us, something that is going to guide us and protect us, something that is going to guide our minds and to free our spirit from every burden. And before we continue, I just want to first of all thank those who used to participate in this program, this is our live show that comes up every Saturday on CMTV 7 p.m., I think of uh, Leslie in Limbe, I think of Betram in Bonoma, I think of Rita in Bonoma, I think of Judel, I think of uh, Eleonor, I think of Watani, I think of uh, Kevin Elohim, Esono Ngoy, Shom James, Pora from Tico, Patrick, uh, I think of Jude and many others. There are a lot of people who used to send their messages we got their names and we still appreciate, but we want to encourage you that wherever you are, text us so that we can know where you are watching us from because we want to hear from you. Send us your prayer request because we are here to also pray for you. For you. This pro program today has been uh, specially packaged so that it can help us. So we'll be right back after this break. Thank you. You are welcome again once more, televiewers. We are very excited to be your way, to come your way today, to bless us and to pray for us. Remember, there is a number on your screen. Uh, you can either WhatsApp or you send us an SMS. We are ready for you this day. Today, we'll be, we are seeing the line of uh, sin, but today we'll be focusing on one aspect that is very, very important and precious to us. We call it a forgiveness of sin. <clears throat> forgiveness of sin. So I want to, wherever you are, text us to tell us what you understand by forgiveness of sin. And also, educate us. We are here to learn. It's an interactive program. So we are waiting for your SMSs. We are waiting for your WhatsApp messages. We are waiting for you to comment. Remember, you are not supposed to call because... We, are not, we will be unable to answer your call live. So we prefer you text us your short messages. Short messages. So today we'll be talking about the forgiveness of sin. And before we go into that, I want, us, I want to remind us that for the past weeks that we have been handling this program, we have been trying to diagnose what we call sin. We have looked at what sin was. We have looked at the original sin. We have looked at the implication of sin to man. And today we are going to look at the forgiveness of sin. It will surprise you to know that many of us are struggling out there because of this issue of sin. Many don't know what forgiveness of sin is. Many don't really know anything about it. So each time they always find themselves guilty before their creator. And because of that, they cannot excel in life. They cannot make steps. They cannot make progress. They cannot progress in life because of what they think about forgiveness of sin. So today I'm going to bring to us an understanding that is going to enlighten and illuminate your spirit so that you'll be able to live free of sin before your creator. Free of sin. That's the target. Because God knows that our problem is sin. But he has chosen to forgive us. So our text this morning, I'm going to look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. I'm going to read to us Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Remember to text us, send your messages. We are here, your prayer request, most importantly, your prayer request. Because the first session of this program is to teach and to educate us 
about spiritual things, about those things that limited, limit us from excelling in life. And the second part is to pray for those who have problems, that wherever you are, wherever you are, send your message because we know that distance is not a barrier. God can answer your prayer anywhere you are. So thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Ephesians chapter 7, verse, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. <laughs> in whom we have, it is something in our possession. We have it. We possess it. It is in our keeping. So he said, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. So, this session, I, will, I don't want us to go and to define what we call redemption through his blood. My focus on this scripture is forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins. I know that you, you know that your problem is sin. Sin consciousness. You are conscious of the things that you do and then you think that God is annoyed with you because of the things that you do. One thing should be clear with us this evening that it is God who created us the way we are. We did not create ourselves. We didn't create ourselves. It is somebody who created us and gave us a book to study ourselves from. So, if you want to know yourself, you must study Christ to know Christ. You cannot know yourself by yourself. It is your creator who can define you and tell you your problems. Just like when you buy your mobile devices, they will tell you the various options. They will tell you how to use it. They can tell you even the malfunctions of it. So you will, they know. So the, the person who fabricated it will tell you exactly what that item is. And it's the same thing that God did. Because God created us in his image. <laughs> he created us in his image and after his likeness. And now, he knows that we have a problem. And that problem, you are not the cause of it. Because I want you to understand one thing. There are two things that are always at local heads. There are two things that the church always preach. They will tell you about sin and they will tell you about forgiveness of sins. Sin you do not bring. Forgiveness of sins you cannot bring. Someone else brought sin. Someone else brought righteousness or forgiveness of, of sin. Adam brought sin. Christ brought righteousness and forgiveness of sin. So we discover that there are some certain things that we can never really fight. We can never really succeed to live, to live them. Why? Because you cannot create it. It is something you are born into. It is in you. And to an extent, I will just tell you that a sin was a gift to the world through Adam. And righteousness is a gift to the world through Christ. So the first, first Adam brought sin, the second Adam brought righteousness. So in this scripture, it tells us very clearly that in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sin is in our possession. What is forgiveness? That's what I want us to, de to, 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 de to define today. What is forgiveness? Is forgiveness a product of man? Oh, it's an act of God that he bestowed upon his children. Is forgiveness of sin a product of man? Or an act of God that he bestowed upon his children? We will discover that we cannot do it. We cannot even forgive. We cannot even ask him to forgive because the Bible has told us clearly, that he has chosen not to, not to see our sins. 
In fact, he said that he has remitted, he has removed our sin. So if he has removed our sin, what sin, therefore, are we always thinking about? What sin, therefore, is holding us back? In the previous sessions, we, we, we studied very, very clearly that sin means to miss the mark, to miss your target, is to have a wrong identity of yourself. Have a wrong identity of yourself. So if God says he created you in Christ and you are seeing yourself as created in Adam, it means that you, are, you have a wrong target of yourself. It means that you have a wrong identity of yourself. But in all of this, the Bible says, in whom we have the forgiveness of sin. So what therefore is sin? What therefore is sin? Uh, sorry, what therefore is forgiveness? Sorry, what therefore is forgiveness? What therefore is forgiveness? So, Forgiveness here comes from the Greek word aphesis. Aphesis, which means freedom. It means pardon. It means deliverance. It means to set at liberty. It also means remission. Remission means to remove. So when I talk about a, a forgiveness, it means that it is a freedom God has instead given to us. That we shouldn't look at the wrong side of us. But rather that we should look at the Christ that is in us. Because what you pay attention to gives direction to your life. So each time we are preaching, we, are, we want you to have the right direction to your life. It's because we care about your life. We care about your daily living. We care about your relationship with God. You cannot really relate with God on a daily basis if you are still thinking that God has not forgiven your sins. You cannot really live with God. You cannot have a sweet fellowship with Him. You cannot have communion with Him. Your fellowship with Him is broken when you are always thinking of the fact that God has something against you. But thank God for this scripture. He says, in whom we have the forgiveness of sin. So what therefore is forgiveness of sin? So one thing we will know here, note here is that forgiveness is a, is a gift. It is not even something you request for before it comes. It is not something you request for. It is something that has come as it's in your possession, to either believe it or to leave it. To either believe it or to leave it. Many of times we, we, we are always thinking about this issue of sin and think, we always think that it is our present act that has put us in that condition. No, it was a, an act from Adam. Adam's act, by eating of the fruit in the Garden of Eden, put humanity into problems. But God has chosen to forgive and to make us new now in Christ. So he said, I have forgiven you. In whom we have forgiveness. Forgiveness is, is a gift. It is not a requirement. It is not a requirement. Before, your, before we were born, God has only written that he has forgiven our sins. So that does not mean that our wrong actions it doesn't, it doesn't give us a license to, to, to keep on behaving somehow because we have forgiveness of sin. It is when you know that your sin has been forgiven that you will be thinking of how to live right. So you say, in whom we have forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. There are riches of God's grace. What is grace? Grace has just been defined as unmerited favor. We know it as something that we never deserved it and it came to us. We are always looking as if all the things that we own in this world, we don't deserve, but we just have it. Grace will first of all have to do with God in his eternities decided to make creation part of him. To make creation part of him. That's one of the that is one, that is one of the riches 
of grace. One of the riches he decided to create. He said, let us create man. Man never asked God to create him. So it is grace. You like to call it unmerited favor. But it says here that forgiveness means freedom. It means to pardon. It means to set at liberty. Which therefore means that once you yourself has not forgiven another person, you yourself, you are not in liberty. You are not free. There is something that is holding you back. So the first aspect about forgiveness is that you free yourself before freeing others. And that is the love of God. That is the love of God. The Bible says he's constraining us to judge. That if one died for all, then all were dead. 2 Corinthians 5.14 So to, to set that liberty freedom. So God himself decided not to hold anything in his own heart against us. So why do we keep things in our heart thinking that it is God who is punishing us? Why? I want us to know today very clearly that what forgiveness is, is that it came from the finished works of Christ on the cross. By the simple fact that Christ died on the cross, forgiveness of sin had come. It means that we are forgiven. Another item is that forgiveness means to give out. So forgiveness means giving out. So God decided to give out. He gave out. He's not taking in. There are many of us who like that push come and say, oh, please forgive me, forgive me, please forgive me. No. You give out. You don't hold anybody in your heart. That's why we are Christians. We live in the likeness of Christ. If you freely forgive us, then we forgive others. So God actually has nothing against you. God gave out. He gave out. And it also means to give out completely without reservation, withholding nothing. <laughs> Which therefore means that in this concept, we begin to say, if God is the one talk about forgiveness, it means that he holds nothing against you. He holds nothing against us. So that's the liberty that you are, that will give you the freedom to save him in the fullness of yourself. You come before him without any guilt. We come before his throne knowing that you're coming to receive but mercy. Coming to receive mercy. Mercy is that act of God that keeps us going on our daily basis in spite of our inabilities, in spite of our wrongdoings. Mercy, the mercy of God is what overlooks our wrongdoing. So we discover that there is none that is righteous as far as human action is concerned. But the grace of God, the mercies of God, keeps us going daily. Keeps us going daily. So that's why we should be grateful. Each day you get up, you are you're supposed to be grateful that the mercy of God has been shown in your life. The mercy of God has been shown in your life. Please send your messages. Send your WhatsApp message, send your, your, your prayer request, your questions, your comments. We welcome them. The second part of this program, we are going to handle that. But before we get there, know that we are talking about forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. It is in Christ. We have to say in whom? That whom they represents Christ. It is in Christ that we have forgiveness of sin. So it means that without Christ, there is nothing like forgiveness of sin. So, as I said, forgiveness means to give out. To give out completely without reservation, withholding nothing. So, God has decided to hold nothing against us. So, we're supposed to be happy. Happy with Him. We worship Him daily, freely. Because free, uh, uh, forgiveness means freedom. It means pardon. It means that your sins have been remitted, they have been removed. It means that God has no charge against you. 
God has no charge against you. This is what this, this is something I want us to know. In Luke, in Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 37, there's something Jesus said. He says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Mm -hmm. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. That was the life of, that was the teachings of Jesus before he faced the cross. He was telling the Israelites, the Jews, that please, this is the life, you have been living in condemnation. So the only way for you to live free of communion is that you should not judge. Because when you judge, other people will judge you. There's an African proverb that says the more you, you bend down to look at the annals of a chicken, the more yours is opening and somebody else is looking. That's what it means here. <laughs> That's what it means here. So condemn not. So you shouldn't condemn others. And then he ends up by saying that forgive so that you shall be forgiven. So Jesus was preaching this before the cross. Jesus actually preached it before the cross. And after the cross, the message changed. Jesus came to the earth with a mission. The mission to declare that God has forgiven you. So he was trying to teach them. So even in Matthew 6, 15, you will see that that was before the cross. He was urging people to forgive others. To, to, he was urging people not to judge others, not, not to condemn others. And to forgive others so that others may forgive you. <laughs> but after the cross, the things change. The things change. Let's look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 432. Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians 4.32. So when we are reading the Bible, we need to know what happened before the cross and what happened after the cross. It's not as if when you know, you cancel some and you accept some. It's for you to have the understanding. As a believer, you need to have an understanding of where man started from and how he progressed and where he is now. That's why I like to use this word, the, 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 the salvation history. Our salvation is a history. He has been developing till now. And even now we are preaching now in the past because God has done all about our salvation and handed it over into our hands. So, Ephesians 4, 32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. This is Paul now. Christ has come. He faced the cross. He died. He was buried. He, ra he raised up. And now, the, me the message of forgiveness of sin is being preached. And he's not telling you to forgive others so as so that Christ will forgive you. He's telling you that forgive others just the way Christ has forgiven you. It means that God has nothing against you, and therefore you are supposed to have nothing against any other person. You are not supposed to do so. You have received. So the measure to which you have received is the measure to which you give out. So God is not annoyed with you. He has shown you how he has been annoyed. And now he's telling you that that annoyance is over. You shouldn't be annoyed with others. Instead, forgive them. Give out. Don't hold anything against anybody. No matter how but they are. That's the message of the cross. Love. Accept people the way they are. Accept people the way they are and embrace them. They're what we call the divine embrace. If you know how, how, how ugly you are in your actions and God embraced you and called you my own beloved son, my own beloved daughter, my own beloved children, then that's the same way you will need to embrace other people around you. We are not saying that you should take yourself and go and give somewhere and they say you should be killed. But we are trying to say that you should hold nothing in your heart against one another. 
That's the message of the cross. We must love others the way we have been loved by Christ. So if we have truly received the love of Christ, then we are truly supposed to share it out. We share it out. The love of Christ, it is unconditional. It's not a conditional love. Okay, if you love me, this is what I do. If you love me, this do like this. If, if when you love, you don't do like this. No, it's not about conditions or no conditions. It is unconditional. It is unemotional. The love of God is not emotional love. It doesn't look into our actions before accepting us or rejecting us. He has chosen in himself, in himself to accept us the way we are. In our filthiness, he has said that we have no sin. So when you look at yourself, you will see sin. But God said, in you, I see no sin. So choose to believe what God has presented to you. Choose to believe it. For your own safety, for your own good, for your own growth. There is no way you can make progress in life when you are keeping people in your heart. Or when you think that God has something against you. Because the little mistake you do and you fail, you will be thinking that, oh, God is punishing me for this act that I did. There's a law we call the law of karma. What goes around comes around. Yes, we know. The Bible says, you reap what you sow. Yes, it's understood. But we cannot take it to interpret it in every aspect of our life. Think that any negative that comes out because we did something wrong somewhere. It cannot be interpreted so. Not every wrong thing that happens to us, it is God punishing us. There are some things that happen to us because of our decisions that we took. That's why God always gives us the, the opportunity to make a choice. So when you make the wrong, if God gives a choice, you make the wrong choice, and something negative thing happens, you don't think that God is punishing you. It is not God, my brother. It is not God, my sister. You made the wrong choice. Nobody Bible says, if you are lacking in anything, you ask. If you are lacking in wisdom, you ask. So you need to always pray and present your will before God. Present your desires before God. So that God should always purify them by His Spirit and lead you and alter your steps to the right places. But at that, the grace of God is rich towards you. We need to take advantage of the grace of God in our lives and do great things and have great fellowship with him and love others, extend a hand of fellowship to one another. That's what the love of Christ wants us to do. That's what the love of Christ wants us to do. What is forgiveness of sin? That's what we have been talking about. We'll continue with the same topic after. Subsequently, we will need to explore it so that we know that many people today, they are looking for who to say the one is a sinner, the one is a sinner. There are some sins that are open, there are some that are hidden. And about nobody is free from this aspect of wrongdoing because there are some things that you do even in your house that is only you and God who knows. It doesn't make you free from sin. But what we are trying to say is that God has chosen to forgive you. So don't see sin in others, see Christ in others. See Christ in others. You can only give what you have. If you have Christ, you give out Christ. If you have hatred, you give out hatred. Timothy said, To the pure, all things are pure. Paul, it's Paul who made a comment in Timothy. To the pure, all things are pure. To the impure, all things are impure. So when you see people are always seeing wrong with others, it's because they themselves, they are wrong inside of themselves. They are wrong. So choose to believe what God has told you. He said, it is in him that we have redemption by the blood and the forgiveness of sins. Through the riches of his grace. In him, we have forgiveness of sin. Don't think that your sins will be forgiven tomorrow. I'm here to give you good news. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven long before you were born. More than 2,000 years ago, 
When Christ died, your sins were forgiven. Forgiveness of sin has to do with the past, present, and future. So we take advantage of it. And we prostrate before God. We kneel before him. We go to his gate with thanksgiving. Because when we go to his throne, what we receive, it is grace and mercy. There's a group of Christians who always like to say, their prayer is always, God have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon me. They know the importance of the mercy of God upon their lives. They know that they are daily living because God has chosen to overlook their faults. And you shouldn't take that as an advantage. But you should see that as a way of humility to go to his presence. Have mercy on me. Yes, you are forgiving mercy, yes, but have mercy on me. Because each person knows that I am not 100% right. I'm good to some extent, I'm good in this aspect, but I'm weak in this aspect. So you don't take your goodness to judge others. But one thing is important today. God has given out without reservation as far as sins are concerned. Forgiveness means to give out completely without holding, with, without holding anything, without reservation. So God has, has no reservation about you. He has chosen that in himself. That in himself. You should have forgiveness. So I want us to look at Psalms, the last scripture. Then we enter our prayer. We'll look at the messages. Psalms. Psalms 103, verse 12. Psalms 103. Remember to send your messages. Text your questions, your prayer requests, and all of that. We are here for you. Psalms 103, verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. It is the Bible telling us. As far as the east is from the west. As far as the east can never join with the west. That's how our sins have been separated from us. In him, we have the forgiveness of sins. God has nothing against you. You are his beloved. He calls you the adopted son. He says that as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. So you are a son of God. By the virtue of the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By that virtue, your sins have been forgiven. You are the beloved. We are sons in the son. We are sons in Christ. God knows us in Christ. We are in him, and in him there is no guilt. And in him there is forgiveness of sins. So your sins have been washed away. Receive it. Understand it. And you will grow. You will make progress in your spiritual life. Don't always think that God is annoyed with you. Thank you. We'll be back after this break. <laughs> 